Base Suzuki on pole position. IMR Racing and Alex Olsen in second place. Third place for Billy McConnell, OMG Suzuki. What a return for Skippy McConnell, the Australian. So that is the lineup then. 38 riders on the grid. This is the Pirelli National Superstock 1000 Championship at Snetterton. Oh! The pint size figure of Richard Cooper catapults off pole position and heads into Richard's. Good start by Andy Reid. Andy Reid comes through from the third row of the grid and nicks third place as they go through the fast right hand. Yeah, Lee Bob Jackson, I think, slot into second. He did. Good start for him. Oh, from the second on. row. Oh, that was Andy Reid up the inside. Nearly cost himself a, a bit of backside skin there. <laughs> he did. <laughs> 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 on the opening lap then and already Andy Reid having made a brilliant start cost himself so much time there yes uh, that uh, yeah. hairpin really easy done it to Wilson you, you sort of commit yourself and you can't slow your bike down any quicker it's not like you're just tootling in there Jack you're hard on the brakes and Jake, yeah. all the guys from the left side of the grid no, hang on, Jack, hang on, oh, hang on, no. hang on. boys on, lost Jack. three off they're all alright they're all four of them off look that was almost That's slow just, motion yeah, they're all right. That's just Domino. There's nobody really to blame there. That's going to be, I, I would have thought, safety car out there. And Milo, Milo Ward's involved there. So too was Bjorn Esmond. You, and and I, I think the number 31 of Sam Cox as well. Yeah, that's right. We, uh, you've got to just... The marshals have a big job to do, do here. They've got to look for debris and fluids, fuel. Remember, full tanks. So they're not going to take a lot of uh, leaking out here. So the marshals have to get the bikes, make sure the riders are all right, get the bikes off. Ah, there is, there's fuel down, look. That's fuel by the look of it. Marshall smells it. And his fuel dodgy stuff to have down there, James. Uh, well, he wouldn't want to run over it. It's completely offline, but that's kind of immaterial. You know, he, he is on track. If you run wide, you don't want to be running over somebody's fuel. It will be lethally slippy. Now, Lebo Jackson is um, the, the unexpected cat in the box here because suddenly he's right there with Richard Cooper. Lee Jackson uh, is looking as if he's very confident that he can take the battle to Richard Cooper up the inside into Richard, but not quite late enough on the break. Yeah, let's see what happens here. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, there's nothing to say what's happening with the actual track, uh, whether that was... I mean, even if it was coolant, water, that's the easiest thing to clean up, but still, you've got to clean it up, and they're coming down that, that sector of track now. There's definitely going to... Yeah, the marshals have been waved off now. What they've got is they'll have one marshal always watching the track. When the bikes are coming, they blow a whistle, everybody gets off the track, and they're going into that sector now. It's offline, and I think that's the key thing. James, what was remarkable was all the guys on the left side of the grid make, made astonishing starts. Lee Jackson, Andy Reid, and Lewis Rollo from the fourth row of the grid. All was on that, that side of the grid. Was that also yes. the inside and running really wide there? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. He's making mistakes, and you know, he's definitely got the pace to be right up front as Alex, as he always has with his stock towel races. Good, good riders like Solson. Uh, but you know when you just... You, a little bit back, you see the leader just pulling away. It's easier to try to add this, the incident look. Oh, that's what caused it, obviously. And that's just uh, what you'd call a traffic jam, isn't it? Still. I was looking at completely the wrong part of the picture just then to see <laughs> what had <laughs> happened. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. Whoa. I mean, the, the main thing is that that's Milo Ward's bike, I think. And the main thing up. is that everybody got up, n no damage whatsoever to the riders, little to the bikes, actually. They didn't look, maybe Milo Ward's as, as a, a slightly bent, but... And a change yeah. at the front, Lee Jackson. He looked who, good, uh, didn't remember, he? He won the second race of the triple header at Brands Hatch yep. GP circuit, so we know that he's got the pace on the FS3 Kawasaki. But he's but gone he's well ripping. here before. He's gone well here before. Yeah. He has. So as they storm over the line then, Lee Jackson leads the way by almost half a second and look at uh, Taylor McKenzie coming through into third place. Then it's Lewis Rollo from that magnificent start from row four, ahead of Billy McConnell. Andy Reid recovers into sixth place past Chrissy Rouse and Emily Larty in eighth place ahead of Alex Olsen and then Levi Day on the second Aprilia in tenth place. Yeah, Richard Cooper really strong on the brakes down here at Wilson there. They're now at Palmer's look, lovely overhead shot there. The guy working this camera is on a big uh, kind of, uh, I don't know what you call them, like a scissor lift. Oh, this is the back cam, sorry. Uh, but the guy up on the gantry, like the, the, the scissor lift thing, yesterday it was so windy, he didn't have to like being up there. He says he was moving about six foot. And you can see that Richard Cooper is sticking right to the back wheel now of Lee Jackson as they go down. Yeah, and, oh, you, this you, is great shot. You know, you, you, you've got to think that being as dominant throughout 
qualifying and practice as he has been, Richard Cooper, this is a pace he can go all day at. You'd have to think that, I think, yeah. So we're going through Williams and onto the Bentley straight. Yeah, the old track joins there from the left, you saw that. It was about another 300 metres longer was the straight originally on the old layout. Who's got the quicker bike? Well, Kawasaki looks quick it, enough. It does, yeah. So Lee Jackson then drops into the huge chicane at the end. Well, and that, uh, that typical raised left leg from Lee. Behind them, Mackenzie, Rollo, McConnell. Cooper had a little look there because Lieber was a little bit wide in the current. So two, these two, of course, strong ex British superbike contenders. This is a good lap from Mackenzie in third, I reckon. And uh, behind him, Rollo McConnell and Reed holding almost the same pace as the Scotsman as they come howling up the hill now. That is lap three complete after out of 12 uh, quarter race distance, and uh, the build Bay Suzuki creeps past into the lead. Yeah, Mackenzie in third on the Bathams bike, won the last two rounds in the wet at Knock Hill, the very wet at Knock Hill, and in the dry at the World Superbike round at, uh, at Donington. And that one was run at about seven o'clock at night. It was uh, I was just on my way out when I, I, I was that late home. <laughs> I didn't stop and watch all of it. <laughs> so number 47 leading the way. Richard Cooper re-establishing himself at the front ahead of Lee Jackson in that distinctive orange helmet and the beautiful uh, black, red and gold Batham's BMW behind. Well, we're running very wide. At, it's getting sucked into Agostini's. Yeah, and, and listen, I, I, I believe that Cooper's capable of these this pace really easily because, remember, no qualifying tyres. These are at least as good a condition as we've had all weekend. And he's been batting 49 second laps in, low 49s, which is impressive on a superbike round here. Um, and he's been doing that all weekend, so these, the, the, these laps are 50, 50.9, 50.5, 50.7 for your leading three. So he can do these all day, I believe. And I think this is an easy pace for, for Cooper. Fastest lap of the race on that last lap, Andy Reid in sixth place, 150.3. Oh, and Lee Jackson having a sneak through there on the inside. Can he make it stick? Not quite. No, that's the switchback there, at that Esses, that Brundle, Nelson, part of the track. He went in a little bit hot, that got him the position, but then ran really wide on the second oh, part. Oh, oh, it's a good line, it's a, it's a really nice time because look, he's back into an apex yeah. at the end there. And, and I'll tell you what, I've never seen I've never seen Jackson riding, riding as aggressively here. No. He's having a go on. Maybe. For, for such a very quiet lad. And, and, and uh, that was, a, was that a triumphant shake no, of no, the fist No, 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 that was a waving of uh, fist. Uh, I believe that was a waving of the fist in anger at uh, Lee Jackson because... But they're but the listen, best of mates. They race they mini bikes every they weekend. Do, yeah, together. but uh, and, uh, I still think that was a, an angry little wave from Cooper. But... This is, I believe, what, what, what Lee Bob Jackson really needs to do because I think, and this met, that might be the gap that Cooper, that Cooper needs. Yeah. If Cooper has a couple of laps on his own with a clear track in front of him, I believe he's got the pace to go. And I think Lee Bob Jackson knows exactly that. And I think he's trying to ruffle him up a little bit. And why not? So now, Lee Jackson now has just lost that little bit of time and he's going to have to deal with Taylor McKenzie. But yeah, it was, it, it's great to see him riding us. As, as ferociously as this. So Lee Jackson, who's an uh, incredibly quiet lad off the track, running strongly in second place. Mackenzie's there, though. Rollo's still strong. So too McConnell on his return. And Reed, another who's lost time, uh, has taken a bit of time to get up to speed during the course of the season. Chrissy Rouse in seventh. Uh, Alex Olsen up to eighth with Levi Day. Larty the Finn back to tenth place. So, Richard Cooper then leads the way. We believe you should make your sub wrap or salad exactly how you want. So we've introduced 21 new and improved ingredients so you can customize... Stop this. You can't give people this much choice. We're shutting it down. Hey, take me down! Stop telling people they can make don't film it, don't film it. No, there's just too much choice, hey! How do I turn this thing off? A crocodile glass veranda is like being inside and outside at the same time. A solid, open structure with a glass roof. It's constructed using powder-coated aluminium and it's maintenance-free. Call 08000 and find out 
how a bespoke crocodile veranda will add style and elegance to your home. Built to last, and crucially, with craftsmanship. Crocodile style. Right now at Wren, there's 50% off all fully built kitchen units. Plus, in our summer sale, there's 15% off all hobs and 20% off all Bosch dishwashers. Hurry, off Wren's 10pm Wednesday. Six lap of 12 and a rousing National Superstock 1000 race here uh, with Richard Cooper, Lee Jackson and Taylor McKenzie locked together at the front. Billy McConnell through to third place and a terrific battle going on behind him involving Rollo, Reed, Roush and Olsen. There they are and uh, Rollo has got beaten back yes. to the back of that, uh, that queue. Richard Cooper hasn't escaped from Jackson and Taylor McKenzie. Number eight, Rollo on the... Uh in competition, a brilliant Ian Newton running the team. Good, good lad, good team as well. Newton, a brilliant rider back in the day, 250 man Grand Prix, mm, top 10 man. So, a uh, really good peddler was Ian. Uh, and, and Rollo, have you met Rollo? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, do you know, I'm not sure if I've met him, great but just lad. kind of listened in to him. Yeah, great lad. Kind of I, stocky. I'm, I'm worried I wouldn't be able to understand the word you he would, says. You would, yeah. Stocky Scott, very thick Scottish accent, obviously. But he's one of them lads who, he's very pale, but he looks healthy pale, because he's got big red cheeks. He just looks <laughs> like he'd be at home outside, you know, doing some kind of, I don't know, outside thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't, I, what I mean is, I don't think the kid spent a lot of time in his room with a PlayStation. He doesn't look that, no, you know. No. Well, as, as he, he um, as he suffered from uh, he suffered from dyslexia, he's a, you know he, he, he would ac ac academic studies weren't going to be his thing. Ah, really. right, okay, okay. He's, uh, so he probably got outdoors and enjoyed himself. Actually, he played hockey and rugby at school, and he looks like a rugby boy, doesn't he? he do, yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. You'd be getting out of his way if he were running towards you. <laughs> <laughs> These are the front three then, still nailed together, uh, with an advantage over Billy McConnell of about 3.2 seconds. But Reed, Roush, Olsen and Rollo down to eighth place. Levi Day ninth, Emily Latte in tenth. The Ducati of Luke Jones is next up. This is the big battle going on. Rollo running a bit wide and losing a bit of time. Yeah, I believe this has been a reasonably good lap for Cooper so far. And if you can hold it together, I think this is going to be dropping into the 49s. They've been on 50 so far. Low 50s, albeit the, your leading three. And Cooper trying to just creep away now on, as they've entered the second half of the race. Uh, with Taylor McKenzie now once again condensing the space between himself and Jackson. Yeah, I think Jackson was doing everything he needed to do to, to, to keep Cooper back he was upsetting him he was making cooper ride differently to what he has been doing not smooth taking different lines and also kind of you know if somebody's waving the fist at you you're getting to him yes i'm going to be fascinated by what uh, how they're getting on with uh, next weekend if they're off doing their little mini gps together on you, never, the pit bikes. you never really know with cooper maybe it was a jokey waving fist I, I, I don't know because the two do get on really well that's cooper and jackson your first and second place men they do get on really well off the bikes and uh, Andy Reid uh, drops behind Rouse and Olsen, so uh, Reid back to seventh place. Rollo still there uh, in eighth. The other point scorers, incidentally, uh, 12th place for Tom Neve on the Honda. Ben Godfrey, 13th. Luke Hedger, 14th. Tom Ward into the point in 15th place ahead of Leon Geacock and Tim Neve. Yeah, Richard Cooper got it. wasn't just a 49, 150 flat, and that was uh, about four tenths quicker than Jackson behind him. And I thought it looked a clean lap from, from Cooper. And it was 150.063, so it was 400s outside uh, Mason Law's impressive lap record. Yeah, but a second slower than Cooper's managed in, in, in yeah. qualifying. I mean, Cooper's, oh, that was an astounding time. That's uh, Lee ZX, Jackson. Yeah, ZX-10 Air Kawasaki looking at there in the hands of Lee Bob Jackson. So the uh, Lincolnshire plumber, former Superstock 600 champion, that was back in 2012. Yeah. A really neat and tidy lad, not just on his bike, but although he, he hasn't been neat and tidy in the first part of this race, hasn't Lee Bob? <laughs> but Lee Bob's a really neat and tidy kid. Everything he's got is tidy. Uh, I reckon he's one of them kids who had a tidy bedroom, even as a lad. <laughs> Hang on, that's we'll really wide. Oh. That's, co that's cost Lee Bob some time, as that. And he's rushing a little bit. This is not like Lee Jackson. Yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd suck Cooper in for a few moments he had, then. He, and I think he knew that. So the, the leading three bikes, this is how competitive this championship is. You've got 
for Suzuki, cross the frame four, normal fire and order. Same for the Kawasaki, 1,000cc, cross the frame four, and the same again for the BMW. The only interesting thing about the BM is it's that Vatham's BM is last year's BM. It's not the new S1000 RR BM. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's been the benchmark one litre sports bike now for years. All these three guys, of course, former British Superbike Championship racers. Uh, Lee Jackson spent four years in British, in the British Superbike Championship. Uh, I beg your pardon, three years, and then returned to Stockthow last year with that victory at Cadwell Park. Yeah, Cooper's won uh, British Superbike rounds. Um, uh, he's also won uh, Superstock 1000 Championship. So, he, he, Cooper's never... Oh, oh, the, oh yeah, oh, stopping that, mate. Taylor, and that's cost him. Grass is going to be a slippy, it's been wet. So he has to cautiously come back in, and I think he's got back in ahead of McConnell in fourth place. He's still in third, but look yep. at the tyres, dirty look, dirty tyres, going to be really steady around there, and that's Hamilton's, and he's got to be steady around this one as well, and he knows it, look. Oh, Billy tried to unnerve him straight away. And does. <laughs> <laughs> so, 32-year-old Billy McConnell, originally from Adelaide in South Australia, moves through into a potential podium position on his return to action. Yeah, and this is... And did you see that how Jackson knew immediately when Taylor came past? Look, he just gave him the room, but just yeah. moved out of the way, let him go past and get yourself tipped into the corner. He knew he was running wide. Smart bit of thinking. Yeah, this is the pass, that's close, but what Taylor has to do is clean those tyres up. Do you see the dirt on the outside, the, the yeah. sort of earth? Uh, and so you've got to, you need at least one corner each way to get them tyres going again. And as the two leaders then dip through Murray's, the battle is going to be on with McConnell, McKenzie, Rouse, Olsen for that, uh, those top six. And I think already he's back through ahead of McConnell. He is Taylor McKenzie back into third place. Number three, McConnell, OMG Suzuki. Number 69, Chrissy Rouse on the old James Whitton number, riding the Morello Racing Kawasaki. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of spoiled here at the front. There is a bit, on it? Uh, slightly, but it's, it's made this battle for the rostrum look rather interesting. Yeah, exactly. Onto the tank lap of... Oh, Luke Jones! Yeah, that's it. Another... looks like he's in trouble with yeah. that Ducati. Retirement. Yeah, that lad doesn't have a lot of luck, doesn't Luke? So the high sparks motorsport Ducati may have run out of sparks and the uh, the big 1200cc twin cylinder Duke pulls out. Yeah, it's allowed to be 1200 because it is a twin. Uh, it doesn't rev just quite as hard. That's, so that's last year's uh, V4, uh, sorry, B twin uh, Panigale at 1200cc, not the V4R that's at 1000cc. Andy Reid had a really bad lap. He's, he's lost about six seconds on the one lap and dropped to 12th place. Uh, just ahead of Hedge Award and Leon Geekon. Yeah, that'll be a run on. That'll be just uh, missing his breaking point, running wide, just staying on the track probably. Uh, and there's a couple of places here where that's really easy to do, Jack. It's it. You just get sucked into these long, hanging, constant radius corners. Storming down the Bentley straight then. BMW, Suzuki, Kawasaki, nose to tail. Cooper and Jackson on Suzuki and Kawasaki leading the way. Alex Olsen there in the background on that bike number 75 the city born lad on the team imr bmw yeah unfortunate for number 77 there taylor mckenzie because he, he did have the pace the, the lap before uh, he went winging straight on there down at angostini's he'd actually put the, the passes up and he had been catching uh, jackson and the pair of them had just been catching cooper only by a tenth though so is the complete uh, lap 10 of 12 then this is onto the penultimate lap and uh, Billy McConnell is still right in there and fighting for that potential podium yeah the Baytham's bike for me is probably the best looking bike on the grid certainly this grid and now uh, I've mentioned it's the best looking bike on any grid at BSB at the minute it's brilliant uh, and Tim and Matt Baytham uh, the brewers uh, are, are the best sponsors in the world because actually into bikes they ride bikes they go on track days they've got road bikes they've got classic bikes so they understand this job really well they're not a sponsor who expects results just because they put a few quid in these these lads uh, know exactly what's going on and and, uh, and and in the team manager team principal call them what you want uh, old stage uh, michael rutter they've got a really savvy uh, team manager panel you never thought we were going to be saying that would you but it is <laughs> and of course the brewery is, uh, look, the brewery is only a mile from uh, Michael's parents' house and so he, they're very long-standing and loyal sponsors. Uh, it's not bad ale either. Oh, I believe so. Well, you don't want to be drinking any that, Jack. Uh, your normal half pint would be, be blowing bubbles, you would. <laughs>
<laughs> it wouldn't be a pretty sight. We're on the, the 11th lap of 12, and with Lee Jackson still giving still it there, everything, and he's still there with Cooper. Not only that, you know, the way he's been riding this race, he's got, we know he's going to have a go, don't we? I'm hoping so. Yeah. So Lee, oh, Lee getting a bit of a speed wobble on the FS3 Kawasaki. He's riding it to the very edge. Yeah, Jackson falls in the championship, but no real threat to Cooper, I don't think. So we'll see how, if, you know, if he does have a little bit of a go, I mean, how hard is Cooper going to fight back? Probably quite hard. Yeah, the best mates. He wants to see, it, see him I off, did, doesn't I, he? Well, <laughs> well, I want to find out what that fish shaking was about, because I'm not sure they are just best mates at the minute. On to the final lap then, this is the Pirelli National Superstop 1000 Championship and Lee Jackson right there with race leader and championship leader uh, Richard Cooper on the build face Suzuki. Right, just three tenths separating Mackenzie and McConnell and uh, we've got a new lap record, Lee Jackson, Jackson. 49.892. He finally establishes an official lap beneath the Magic 150. Yeah, not the fastest lap ever. Remember, lap records have to be set in races, yeah. not in qualifying. Yeah, but that is the right. official new lap record. Now, so, what's Lee Bob got? Look, he doesn't seem to just have the sprint out of the turns, but what about the brakes? No, well, this is down into Agostini's. That was a, that's a good overtaking opportunity into Agostini's mist. He's on the outside, he's close. There's no way he's going to get past here. I don't think this is Hamilton's. It, it's treacherous little corner. It's very flat camber, difficult to, to make a move there. This is obvious. The, the build base hauls quickly out of the corners, yeah, James. But that just might seems... not be the bike. That, that, I believe that's that's little Richard Cooper getting on the, the power fairly early. And this is this is where this is where Lee Bob needs to be building it and getting a slip stream. Didn't get a really good run out of there. Is he in the slip stream? Yes he is, but I don't think he's gonna be close enough at the end of the straight. Time's running so, out for Lee Bob because I think that's where he should have been. But, then, but he's close enough that he's pulled, he's pulled some stuff going through the chicane before. Oh, and he's going to have another go. Oh, he runs it wide. Does he's he? out on the dirt. He rescues it brilliantly. Could have gone well down at that point. But he rescues the FS3 Kawasaki. I knew he was going to have a dip going through the chicane on that final lap. It yeah. had to be done. Yeah. It's going to be Richard Cooper emerging victorious. Yeah, and probably quite angry. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen an angry Richard Cooper. So, Richard Cooper then wheelies triumphantly up the hill here, up the centre straight, to take victory in the Pirelli National Superstock 1000 Championship after beating off the attentions of the aggressive Lee Jackson. Second place, and then third place for Taylor McKenzie and Billy McConnell. What a comeback for Skippy. Uh, fifth place for Chrissy Rouse. Sixth place for Alex Olsen. Look at these guys storming up the hill. Ooh, did the Aprilia hang on? He did. Yes. Le and Levi Day in seventh became Lee.